I said to you guys not long ago at the end of one of my rebuilds that I wanted to start going to countries that I hadn't yet been to whilst I've been doing these rebuilds. And today we are taking a trip over to Belgium and we are going to be rebuilding Club Bruges. Every time I play against these guys, it's always in the group stage of the Champions League and they're always third or fourth in the table by the end of it. At the time of recording this video, Club Bruges are currently sitting second in the Belgian Pro League, only one place behind Union saint Galois. By the time I'm done with Club Bruges in this rebuild, not only are we going to be storming the Belgian Pro League every single season, we're going to be storming the Champions League and by the end of it, we are going to be European champions. If you guys go on to enjoy this video, smash the like button, smash the hell out of that subscribe button to that notification bell on so you never miss a video that i upload we are so close now to 3,000 subscribers i can nearly taste it also the like goal for this video is 100 can we hit 100 likes on this video ladies and gentlemen if you have yet to see one of my rebuild videos before here are the rules the main objective of this rebuild is to win the champions league i can make any transfers that i want making it as realistic as possible all games have to be simulated but the champions league final has to be played. Now that you know how this works, strap yourselves in and enjoy the video. So to begin this rebuild with Club Bruce, we've been given just over 22 million. And just to prove to you guys that I don't always get lucky with the Youth Academy players, we have got absolute stinkers in the Youth Academy so far. There's not one of these players that I could properly put to good use in that starting 11. So we have began this transfer window by selling Bastos for 5.2 million, and we've also sent out Stanley and Soki on a two-year loan deal. And we have made our first signing of this transfer window. We have brought in the Spanish centre-back Oscar Mingueza for just 9 million from Barcelona. We've also just sold Isqueiro for just over 1.5 million. I'm very aware that I bought this guy before and it didn't really work out as well as I'd hoped, but this time I am determined to use him properly. He's not going anywhere but that right midfielder position. We have just brought Silas from Stuttgart for just under 15 million. We've also just sold Rude Vorma for 5.5 million. We've also just sent out Daniel Perez on a two-year loan deal. We have also just bolstered our attacking options just a little bit more. We brought in Ben Breton Diaz for 6 Million. Meanwhile, we just made a little bit more money elsewhere by selling Federico Ricca for 2.7 million, and we have also sold the Belgian legend himself, Toby Alderweireld, for just over 20 million. And for once, I'm sticking with the default formation that I loaded into when I started this career mode with Club Brews. This is how we got the team lining up. Our new signings are all in the team. There's a lot of quality already in this starting 11 without me adding anything into it anyway. So within a couple of seasons' time, I genuinely think we'll be doing all right in the champions league god damn we are in the group of death man city psg and rb we ain't got a chance we have not got a hope in hell of getting out of this group alive well at least we didn't finish bottom manchester city finished bottom that i'm finding slightly hard to believe i ain't gonna front to you with the team that man city have got they should definitely be doing better than that well it's safe to say that we are absolutely tearing it up in the pro league we are killing it we've only lost one all season that is freaking ridiculous if you ask me. We didn't do anything in that transfer window because we only had like 3 million left to play with after that first transfer window. And with that money, you're not going to bring in anybody that's going to fit this team or improve it in any way, shape or form. Let's be completely honest. But it is very visible to see that this team has come on leaps and bounds since the beginning of this season. Like honestly, next season we're definitely going to be doing better in that Champions League. And we are in the prelim round against Leicester in the Europa League as well. So it isn't all bad news, I suppose. While we have come to the end of this season, it's safe to say that we are in a level of our own. Nobody came near us this time. We were 29 points clear top of the table and in the playoffs we won four drew two and nobody really came close to us meanwhile they won a trophy milan won the europa league and psg won the champions league man this guy had a good season 30 goal contributions in 49 games this season what a legend this guy is to be fair i'm so happy i've got him in the team i completely forgot about him prior to this rebuild starting hans vanekin from the central midfielder position got 33 goals 
goal contributions in 50 games. That is insanity. CLS, fair play, 79 rate. He'd gone up four, but he got 11 goal contributions this season, which is shite, if I'm being honest. In fairness, we won the Pro League with flying colours. We got knocked out of the group stage in the Champions League. We got knocked out at some point in the Europa League. I'm guessing maybe the quarters or semi-finals or something along them lines. Next season, hopefully we'll get a bigger budget, and that means better players joining the team. And we have began season two with just under 46 million. And to start this transfer window off, we have made a sale in David Okereke for just over 3 million. We've also just sold Edward Sobel for just over 13.5 million. And we've also just sent out Owen Otosawi on a one year loan deal. Meanwhile, we have gone out and brought another CDM for the team in, Ali Masrati, and we have bought him for just over 20 million. Now, this one I'm buzzing with. We've just brought in the German giant Lucas Klosterman for just over 35 million. Meanwhile, we have just sent out Kamal Sawar on a two year loan deal. And after to that transfer winner this is how we got the team lining up it is a far better team than we had this time last season isn't he holy shit Mignolet he surprised me to be fair 82 rated 34 years old obviously we will be looking for another keeper next season because obviously 34 years old isn't going to last too much longer and obviously Di Catalera and Brayton Diaz both performed well last season so they're both still in that starting 11 we did make it through to the Champions League we beat Celtic and I can't remember the other team that we beat in the qualifying round but we are are in the group stage of the Champions League. I'm hoping this time we can get a little bit further. We ain't gonna have this easy, are we, this time either. PSG, Leipzig, and Young Boys. I ain't too fussed about Young Boys, in fairness. I apologise to Young Boys fans out there, but I, I'm just not gonna lie to you. PSG and RB Leipzig, definitely the favourites to go through. I think we may edge Leipzig just by a fraction in one game, but that's about it. We really need to perform if we want to get through this group. This one is going to be a difficult rebuild. Not only have we got knocked out in the first season in the group stage, we've also done it in the second season. We haven't even had a chance to get to the round of 16. PSG and Leipzig ran away with it in the end. Young boys finished above us. That I suppose that's my fault for being cocky, but next season, we oh, we need to get out of the group. At least in the Pro League, we're actually winning the league at the minute. Obviously, we're only one point above Genk, two points above Anderlecht. But like I said, at least we're doing well in the league. Meanwhile, we have just sent out Noah and Bamba on a short term loan deal. Apart from sending and Bamba out on loan, we didn't do a single thing in that transfer window. Purely because this is how we got the team looking going into the second half of the season. And without us being in the Champions League now, I didn't really feel the need to spend a shit ton of money, which we don't actually have, on a player that won't fit the team. It's going to be a shame, but I think we are going to have to let this guy go at some point. The money that we can bring in for him could transform this team. I'm happy to say that Silas is doing a lot better this time. 82 rated, 24 years old. The guy's actually found his feet this time. I'm just hoping for the remainder of this season that we can do well in the league and win the League Cup. So at the end of the season, we did recover quite well in the end. We absolutely smashed it in the league. We won the championship round. We won the regular season. So it is all good in the Pro League. And we've also managed to win the Crow Cup. So what turned out to be quite a bad start to the season is ended quite well in fairness. Meanwhile, it was Leicester City who won the Europa Conference League. Holy shit, what a game that turned out to be. Final beat Leverkusen 4-3 on penalties in a 5-5 thriller. And it was Atletico Madrid who won the Champions League. Holy shit. He had an absolutely tremendous season this time. 38 goal contributions in 55 games. Silas, 25 goal contributions in 54 games. Vanekin from the central midfielder position, once again, 18 goals, 9 assists, 53 games. Man, this guy is truly something special, isn't he? And Noah Lang, whilst he hasn't got the stats to back him up, he's gone up to 87 rated this time. These pair here are going to be very difficult to keep hold of next season because the money that teams are going to throw at us is going to be very tempting to take. But I suppose if we did release these pair, we could bring in a shit ton of new players with that money. But I suppose we're going to have to wait and find out next season. So this season, we have been given just under 59 million. So with Manila getting older as each season progresses in this rebuild, we have decided to bring in a brand new keeper in his place. We have brought in Altar by India for just over 31 million. And we have just grabbed a bargain with this guy. We have just brought in the French central attacker midfielder Ludovic Blas for just 34 million. Meanwhile, we have just sold Muwasa for just under 9 million. We have also just sent out Cissé Sandron a two-year low deal to Sisulo, And we've also just sent out, once again, Noah and 
Bamba on a two-year loan deal. We have also just sent out Daniel Perez on a two-year loan move to Braga as well. And this is how we got the team looking after that transfer window has come to an end. And this team is looking sexual, if I do say so myself. It has actually quite surprised me that neither one of these pair have had a transfer offer. But uh, to be fair, it bodes well for me. I get to keep them. We have made it through to the Champions League group stage as well after beating Ajax and another team in the qualifying rounds. I can't remember what the other team were. I'm not going to show you those games. I'm just either going to tell you we made it through to the Champions League or the Europa League. Now, I feel like we've got a very good shot at this. We're in Group D with Bayern Munich, Latium and Athens. Now, Bayern Munich are the obvious favourites, but that second spot is definitely open between ourselves and Latium. Athens, I'm not really putting money on them doing much further than third place, but ourselves and Latium are going to be fighting tooth and nail for that second spot. I am very, very slowly beginning to give up. I have absolutely no idea where we keep going wrong in the Champions League. But we keep finishing freaking bottom of the group stage. I don't actually think we've won a single game in the three seasons we've been in the Champions League. Honestly, the thing is, our team is actually really good. That's the part I can't get my head around. We're really good. But we can't seem to do well in the Champions League. But in the Pro League, we absolutely kill it every single season so far. We've absolutely smashed the Pro League. I mean, look at this. Halfway through the season, we are 12 points clear of second place Genk. I really don't know where I've got to improve the team. Maybe improve the defence a little bit, but I, I don't know. We only had around two to three million pound left in the transfer budget from the first transfer window of this season. So I didn't bother bringing anybody in. I think maybe next season, I'm going to bring in another very good centre-back. And obviously... Obviously, Vanekin's 31 years old. He's not getting any younger. It might be time to consider bringing in another midfielder. But when you look at the team, we should not be going bottom of the group stage every single freaking season. It's actually a joke at this point how we can't even win a game. Hopefully, next season is the season where we actually get out of the group stage. That's all I want at this point. And once again, we've absolutely killed it in the Pro League. We smashed the league in the regular season. And in the playoffs, we were 10 points clear at the top. But in the Croaky League, Andalette got the better of us beating us 3-2 in the final. Meanwhile, it was Leon this time to win the Europa Conference League. Leicester City won the Europa League. And once again, it was PSG won the Champions League in a 4-3 thriller against Barcelona. This is frustrating, man. When you look at this team that we've got here, like, what can we do to actually do well in the Champions League? I think we need to bring in another midfielder and maybe another defender. But apart from that, I really don't know where we're going wrong. I've got to admit, I hope next season something does change because otherwise I will be completely clueless on what to do next. So we begin this season with just over 57 million. And we begin this transfer window by cashing in on Hans Vanneken. He has been an absolutely tremendous player for Club Brews since the beginning of this rebuild. But he is almost 32 now and I wanted to cash in on him just before he began to decline in overall. So we have just managed to get... 42.7 million pounds for him and in his place we have brought in a humongously good replacement for him we have brought in the Dutch central midfielder criminally underrated at Manchester United Donny van der Beek he has come away from Spurs of all teams for just over 55 million and we have definitely just done well with this deal we brought in Leo Guerrero the Italian giant six foot six 21 years old 83 rated we bought him for just over 40 million pound from Chelsea and we've also given them Clinton Matter in the deal as well. And after that transfer, window, this is how we got the team lining up for our fourth season this time, I think it is anyways. We've got the team looking exceptionally well, if you ask me. Guerrero slotting straight into this team. It's looking like a really, really good team. This time, if we don't make it past the group stage of the Champions League, I'm going to be freaking fuming. Okay, surely to God, we've got to make it through now. We're up against AC Milan, Ajax and Copenhagen. We beat Ajax last season to get qualification into the group stage of the Champions League so surely to God with our team improving each season you would think that we'd beat Ajax. AC Milan definitely going to be a tough team to beat but I believe our team is stronger right now. Honestly if we don't make it through the group stage for a full season running I'm gonna be devastated. Well all I can say is it's about goddamn time. Thank God for that. We are finally 
finally made it out to the group stage. It only took us four bleeding seasons, but we did it and we topped the group whilst doing it. Ajax and ourselves made it out of the group stage into the round of 16. AC Milan fell short in the end. So, we are into the round of 16. Who's our next opponent? We are through to the quarterfinals. It is only Arsenal. Honestly, at this point, if we weren't absolutely smashing the Pro League, I'd be quite surprised with how strong our team become. And to begin this transfer window, we have managed to bring in Lucas Acampos on a free. Obviously, we didn't do anything in that transfer window. We blew all of our money in the first transfer window, gained Donny van der Beek in and also gained this guy in, Guerrero. Now, when you actually take a look at this team, there's no real reason why we can't go all the way. If we get the right draws against the right teams, there's absolutely no reason why we can't get to the final this season. Obviously, we've got Arsenal first, so we're going to wipe the floor with them to get into the quarterfinals. Then after that, it is definitely going to be quite tricky. Is it just me, or as of late, are we meeting up with Arsenal a hell of a lot more frequently in the Champions League? Have you noticed, or is it just me? They have got a pretty decent team. I'll give them credit where credit's due. They've got a very strong team, but I would argue that ours is stronger. Away from home in the first leg, 9pm kickoff at the Emirates. Can we do the business? Yes, we can. And Silas and the big guy up top get us the two goals that win us this game and give us that all-important advantage going into the second leg. And the suspension case has finally hit us, and it hit us big time, to be fair. We've got Lang out of this game, so a campus will take his spot. The advantage is definitely a good thing, to be fair. We're at the Jan Bredel Stadium. Can we just knock Arsenal out already, for the love of all that's holy? Fuck off, Arsenal. London is blue. Fuck you. We're into the quarters. Well, speaking of London being blue, check out who we're actually playing against next. We're up against Chelsea in the quarters. We're away from home in the first leg. I'm not going to dwell too much on their team because it is freaking ridiculous. This might be where our journey gets cut short, if I'm being honest, because that team is definitely scary, I'll be honest with you. Away from home in the first leg, though, as I've just said, can we get if we can get a draw that'll do a draw will definitely definitely do the big man getting a goal the toro martinez getting the equalizer boss 72nd minute then dembele equalizing 10 minutes before the game ends i must admit i'm nervous going into this game a little bit because this team here that we're facing could easily knock us out we have got our strongest 11 out though we have got a very very good team but chelsea's team is just freaking insane and let's be honest we're 2-2 two, two on aggregate. Home advantage. Please, for the love of God, favor us. Come on. Let's knock him out. Come on. Yes. Lucas Acampas and the big man up top. Get us the goals that take us into the semifinals. I just knew that if we beat Chelsea then, it was going to be PSG that we were going to face in the semifinals. I've got a very funny feeling we're about to get clowned against. Honestly, PSG's team is definitely not to be taken lightly. But do you know what? We're here now, semi-finals, away from home. Come on, boys, get away. Oh, do you know what? Do you know what? Something is happening. Something is happening. We're 2-2 two, two going into the second leg. Something is happening here. Imagine if somehow we actually pulled this off. The first season where we don't get knocked out straight away, we go on to the finals and potentially go on to win it. 2-2 two, two on aggregate. Club Bruges versus PSG at home. Come on, boys. Put the nail on the coffin and do it. Come on! Come on! 5-4 on penalties. 4-4 four, four overall on aggregate. 2-all on the night. Somehow, we have knocked out Chelsea. Well, no, no surprise we have Arsenal, to be fair. But we have just knocked out, by a country mile, the biggest threat to us winning this Champions League. Whoever we face in the final is not going to be as good as PSG. I am telling you that for nothing. I might have to eat my words because Barcelona are definitely not a team to be taken lightly. They're not as good as PSG in my opinion, but definitely going to give us a game in the Champions League final. But before we get into the final itself, let's take a look at how well we've done this season. And if the regular season form anything to speak of by the playoffs, yeah, we've absolutely demolished the playoffs as well. We've also won the Crokey Cup as well, so we are on for the treble. Somehow Liverpool are in the Europa Conference League and Atletico Madrid won the Europa League. It's very easy to see why our team did so so well this season when you look at Breton Diaz and the big guy himself look at the goals and assists combine them that's 89 goals they've scored this season that is freaking insanity obviously I am gutted that Silas is out injured for this game I was really looking forward to playing with him but I suppose we do have a Campos instead Barcelona's team they've got Schick They've got Marino, Stones, Arujo, Dallo. They've got some very, very good players in that team, to be fair. Dallo, I don't know why I said him. He's actually one of the weaker links. We are going to go into this game, and it's definitely going to be tricky, especially with three at the back. 
But it is Barcelona versus Club Brews at the Parc des Prince in the Champions League final. If you guys watch my RB Leipzig career mage, you guys will know I do not do well with the three at the back formation. So this one is certainly going to be an interesting one. We've got the ball here with Blas. We've got an open... Oh, for fuck's sake. They're so compact. We've got Lang on the ball here. The Dutch maestro himself. Can we find Olsen? Olsen's made a terrific run. Look at the amount of bloody blue and red shirt compared to my yellow. Oh, oh hang on. Di Catalea. On his left. Oh, for f oh, come on. You've got to be taking the options better than that. Hang on. We s oh, my God. What am I doing? Why did I just try to chip that? I'm a fucking idiot. I cannot believe I've just tried to chip that. I am an absolute muppet for that. Oh, my God. You've got to be kidding me. Get down. Oh, what a save. We are under the cosh here, boys. Oh, what a bit of defending that is. We found Lang on this left-hand side of the pitch. We found Lang. Lang is cutting inside here. We're going to find Blast. Blast is in acres of room here. He's going to take the shot. And that is 1-0 to Club Bruges after an exceptionally good counter-attack. Man, we tore them apart then. What a bit of play that was. Barcelona's defence was lacking and we took advantage. Just take a look at this. Lang cuts inside. He finds Blast. Acres of room and he just bangs it. Let's not concede straight away, eh, you guys? Let's not concede straight away. Let's not concede straight away. For fuck's sake! Oh, man. Why could none of us... Oh, my God, really? Why could nobody there put a tackle in? Nobody. All a bunch of bloody statues. United can defend better than that. And that is freaking saying something. We've got Lang on the ball here. Cheeky 1-2. Blast, find that one too, and we are away. Lang, you're all alone. It's all you. No, it's not. We're going to sweat this three times over. How the fuck have you just missed that? What? How have you... No, 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 no. You're coming off for that. You are coming off. Breton Diaz, never buy Breton Diaz. He misses open goals. I'm honestly in disbelief that we're not 2-1 up now. How the fuck do you miss that?
of a panda here. We've got a bit... Ooh, a panda's got a bit of pace, has he? We're going to exploit that. We're going to use that. And we're going to make it... Oh, for fuck's sake, why can none of our strikers hit the fucking target? And that is half time. And the fact that we're not winning this game is an absolute travesty. Our strikers need a serious kicking after them messies. We found him. We found him again. We're going to make another... Oh! Oh, look at that. Look at that. That is how you finish. Man, what a goal this was. What a... We literally just passed it from one side of the pitch to the other, and it went in for us. Beautiful. Van der Beek. Can he find Lang? Lang is... I tell you what, if we can get Lang on the run here, he'll do Dallow like he's nothing. Oh, look at this. Look at this for football. Awesome first time money. Oh, my God. Why can none of our players finish? Why can none of our players hit a freaking ball properly here? That's yet another golden opportunity lost um that wasn't how that was supposed to go but it doesn't really matter because we retrieved the ball anyways we're gonna find a panda a panda oh my god he's just oh he's just taking dello out it's two on one basically it's two on one and if we don't fucking score this it's oh my god we are wank we are so shit at scoring golden opportunities lang do not let trincao get any room come on for fuck's sake make it oh no 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 I beg, not like this. I beg. We've done so well. We've done so well. All get... Ah, oh, there you go. That's exactly what you like to see. Di Catalera. Come on. Oh, oh, no. I tried to sneak it in between, but it didn't work. We may have one more golden opportunity. Can we get him through? Come on. Come on. You're too big for Dallo. Come on, lad. You're too big for him. We're going to sweat this. Finally. Finally. We get a goal. We finally put the nail in the coffin. 3-1 to Club Bruges. Barcelona are done. It is ours. This game is ours. Man, this game. To be fair, Dallo gave up there for a little bit. I don't know why, but it gave us that golden opportunity to sweat it across the box for Openda. Got to be honest, taking Diaz off and putting Openda on was probably one of the best decisions I could have made. And that has surely got to be it. Yes, it is. We have made Club Bruges the best team in the world. They have officially just won the UEFA Champions League. Now, that was difficult obviously club bruges are a big big team in belgium and they are expected to do well every single time in that belgian pro league however when it comes to the champions league they're a small fish in a big pond and that was proved in the first three seasons we couldn't even get out of the group stage but in the fourth and final season we got out of the group stage we batted arsenal chelsea and psg in order to get to the final where we put the nail in the coffin and beat barcelona 3-1 if you guys enjoyed this video smash the like button smash the hell out of that subscribe button to that notification so you never miss a video that I upload. That is all from me. It has been your boy Gordon. I hope you guys have a fantastic afternoon. And until next time, I'll see you later.